Thanks for joining. I'm Niels, an Enterprise Solutions Consultant at Portina. Today I'll walk you through Portina Business Edition. It's a guided demo so you can see how Portina works, what problems it solves, and why it's become the go-to platform for enterprises moving to containers and Kubernetes. At its core, Portainer is a self-hosted container management platform. That means you deploy it inside your own infrastructure as a lightweight Docker container running on a simple VM or for enterprise grade HA setups on a small Kubernetes or Docker Swarm management cluster. It's incredibly efficient. A single instance can manage thousands of clusters consuming as little as one vCPU and two gig of RAM or scaling to tens of thousands of environments. Think of it like a vCenter for containers. Portainer manages Docker, Docker Swarm, Podman, and Kubernetes. Today I'll focus mainly on Kubernetes, since that's the de facto standard for container orchestration, but everything I show applies across all platforms. One tool, soup to nuts. When you first log into Portainer, you'll see this dashboard. It's basically a structured list of all your environments you're managing, whether they're Docker, Swarm, Podman, or Kubernetes. Each will show its status, CPU, RAM, node count, and number of containers. It's basically an instant snapshot of what's running and where. It's also important to understand Portainer's role. Portainer is the middleware that sits between your users and the clusters they need to work with. All authentication, access control, and management operations happen here in Portainer. Portainer pushes configuration, settings, and policies down to, into each environment, but the user experience is centralized here. That means you don't need to give developers direct access to your Kubernetes clusters and everything stays consistent, secure, and auditable. A lot of enterprises run a large number of clusters, sometimes hundreds, sometimes thousands. So it's important to be able to filter this view to find exactly the cluster you want to manage. We enable you to select a platform, connection type, status, tags, etc., to be able to make it easy to find your environment, or you can simply search for your environment up here. In this view, on the top right, you'll see that we have a kube config download. This kube config file is configured so that all communications are between your user and Portainer. That means you don't have to open up direct access from your users to your clusters. In the top right here, you can have your personal settings. You might like to change a theme. You can see your password here. Define access tokens, get credentials, Helm repos. Everything is for your user is configured here. I prefer the dark theme myself, so I'm going to stick with that for the rest of the demo. So in this demo environment, I have my Portainer container running specifically on this Docker host. You can see it running here. You can see here it's incredibly lightweight, managing everything you saw in my environments list using a couple of hundred gig of RAM and a very low amount of CPU. Once you've deployed Portainer, the very first step in any enterprise rollout is to lock in some of your global settings, which can be done here in settings and general. There are some global settings you can adjust here, such as your custom logo and login screen banner. You can define a Helm repo or any global Kubernetes settings. For example, you may want to disable kube shell access for any non-admin users. They can simply be done here, and this is a global policy that applies across all your Kubernetes environments. There are many other settings here. I won't go into each one of them, but you can find all the information about these in our documentation. Another thing you'd want to do immediately after deploying Portana is set up your SSL certificates to make sure you enable secure communications. In this view, another thing you'll see is experimental features. When we release new experimental features, they become available here. At this point in time, we have a new feature for observability that enables alerting, which I'll run through later. You also have the ability to hide any containers you don't want users to see in the UI across your environments and you can set up backups. You can simply do a download of your configuration right here, or you can set it up with a schedule. Of course, we recommend scheduling automated backups. Once you've set up your global policies and enabled secure communications, the very next thing you'll want to do is set up your authentication, of course. Portainer integrates with your corporate identity, so you can use LDAP, Microsoft Active Directory, or OAuth to authenticate your users. Once you've set up your authentication method and provider, you can enable automatic user provisioning and automatic team membership. This means when someone logs in to Portainer using a corporate authentication method, if you have a group name they belong to that matches a team name in Portainer, the user will automatically become a member of that team in Portainer, making it really simple to make sure your RBAC is consistent with your org structure and you don't waste time managing users one by one. If you have an AD group name, for example, that doesn't match the team name exactly, you can even use regex to map them. 
So now we set up our global policies, secure communications, and enabled authentication through our corporate directory. It's time to start onboarding clusters. We do that over here on the left under environment related and environments and simply clicking add environment. As you can see here, you can connect to an existing environment, whether it be Docker, Swarm, Podman, Kubernetes, or even ACI, or we enable you to build new environments. You click on here and click start wizard. We can provision a brand new Telos environment all from Portainer itself. If you have an existing environment, you simply click a environment, select the type, start wizard. And next you select the type of agent we want to use to connect to your environment. We have a regular agent, a standard edge agent, and an async edge agent. I won't go into all the detail here, but the key differences are you'd use an agent deployment and a data center type environment where you have good connectivity and a consistent connection. Then if you have an environment outside of your data center, you can use an edge agent to enable it to connect back to Portainer meaning you don't need to open up firewall rules at your remote site. Instead, you can have your edge agent connect directly back to Portainer itself. And the ASIC edge agent, really useful for remote environments that don't have good connectivity back to your data center. This enables Portainer to queue up commands for when your edge agent next connects back into Portainer and execute them then. More information on these agents and how they work at docs.portainer.io. We make it really simple for you to deploy these agents. You simply select its agent type, copy the command, and then in your environment, simply run that command. You give the environment a name, put in the IP of the environment or DNS name. After you've run this command, simply click connect and Portainer will add the environment to this instance. And to keep things organized, you can group environments by geo, department, environment type, or SLA making it easy to provide access to any of those groups in one place. Now, speaking of providing access, RBAC is where Portainer adds huge value. Docker actually has no concept of RBAC at all, so Portainer provides it. Kubernetes does have RBAC, but it's notoriously complex with hundreds of verbs, roles, and bindings. Most teams end up over-provisioning because it's too hard to manage securely. Portainer solves that by orchestrating Kubernetes' native RBAC engine in a simplified, consistent model across all environments. We give you predefined roles scoped either cluster wide or to a specific namespace. And the way we handle these is the most restrictive role always applies, unless you explicitly override it. That keeps things secure by default without administrative headache. The end result is enterprise grade access control whether you're running Docker, Kubernetes, Swarm or Podman, all managed from one place. I touched on teams earlier. This is where you'd set up your teams. Once you've added your environments, they'll show up here in our dashboard. You can go into an environment and click on the environment setup page for your cluster. And this is where you define your per cluster policies. You can decide for this cluster, for example, if you want users to be allowed to use external load balances. This is really handy, especially if you're using a Kubernetes environment in the cloud. Often external load balances are quite costly. You can allow or disallow specific ingress controllers right here. You can define which storage options are available for your users using this cluster. And as you can see, there are many other settings you can define here. Another really useful enterprise feature is to enable a change window. That way, even if you have GitOps in action, reconciling your workloads, it'll make sure that only happens within your change window. And over here on the left, if you click on security constraints, you can enable pod security constraints. And in one click, you can enforce industry standard security policies. This essentially uses OPA Gatekeeper, and enables you to do things like block privileged containers, restrict which registries can be used, or enforce labels or annotations for governance. Using these security constraints, you can make your security proactive instead of reactive. Next, if we click on namespaces over here on the left, namespaces are essentially how you give your users their own space to deploy in. In Portainer, you pre create them, assign quotas, and map users or teams. This prevents runaway apps consuming all your CPU memory or expensive cloud resources like load balances or storage. To create a namespace, you just click add with form here. You give it a name and you have the ability to define resource quotas. Then for this namespace, you can limit what resources can be used. You can also define load balancer quotas, registries that can be used by users in this namespace, and even define storage quotas. Once your namespace is being set up to provide your users access to that namespace, you need to make sure that you have actually provided access to the cluster in the environments view. 
I'm going to select the role, create access, and I'll go back to my namespace, manage access, the group that I want to provide access for, and hit create access. Simple as that. The next time someone that belongs to that group logs in, they'll see this environment and have access to this namespace to deploy their applications. Another important thing for your cluster or environment would be to set up registries. Container registries are where apps come from. So in Portainer, you can centralize registry management. You can use Docker Hub, AWS ECR. You can see all the options here, including your custom own registry. This way you can define which registries are available for your clusters and namespaces. Once set up, you can even browse inside your registry to check tags and images through here. So at this point, we're ready to deploy some applications. You can just click on applications and Portona essentially gives you three options. We give you the ability to deploy using a form. This makes it really simple to deploy apps for IT generalists or just to get an app out quickly. You give it a name, an image. You can deploy it into a stack or just on its own. Set your environment variables, secrets, etc., all from one place. What's really cool, you can define your resource reservations for the app, instance count, any preferences or constraints you like, select how you'd like to expose your application to the outside world, and hit deploy. If the resources aren't available, or you've misconfigured something along the way in this form, Portana will not let you deploy the application, which is really convenient. As many of you will know, Kubernetes on its own will basically accept any deployment, whether it's going to be successful or not. So if you define your app with too many resources and they're not actually available in the node and go to deploy in standard Kubernetes, it'll accept it, it'll just keep failing. Portana actually performs all the checks so you know that if you hit deploy application, it's going to work. As an alternative to the form, you can click create from code. You could deploy a Helm chart, for example. You could write or paste in your own YAML right here. You could provide a link to hosted YAML to deploy an app. And you could have custom templates, which you can predefine. You'll also note here you can select repository. Portainer has GitOps built in, so no need for Argo, CD, or Flux. It continuously reconciles workloads from your Git repo, agentless and simply. You simply select your namespace, on your git credentials, plug in your repo URL, the manifest path which you'd like it to monitor, and enable GitOps updates. By default, we use a polling mechanism which will monitor your manifest for changes and then pull and deploy your updated application. You also have the option to use webhooks if you prefer to use webhooks to deploy. Another useful feature here is you can select always apply manifest. This will make sure you drop any custom local changes and apply the manifest from code. And if you're an organization where for your production environment, your infrastructure is code first, you can actually disable the use of forms entirely in production so you can enforce GitOps only workflows. Once your applications are running, you need some visibility. You can just click on details up here under cluster and see logs for your individual nodes in case you want to look at Kubernetes logs. Or if you want to look at the specific application, you can click applications, click your deployed application, scroll down here, and I can see logs here as well. Being able to get to logs for Kubernetes nodes, as well as the actual application logs, all from the Portana UI makes troubleshooting a lot faster and easier. And on top of that, we've added metrics and alerts. With metrics server enabled, Portana shows CPU memory, the actual applications, and for your nodes, all in real time. And via the Portana API, you can feed all this data straight into tools like Prometheus and Grafana for advanced observability. Lastly, before I forget, if you want to jump into your application itself, you can just come down here and click console. If you want to jump into bin sh, hit connect, and you're there. Disconnect if you want to jump into bin bash. As easy as that, all from the Portana UI. Now for advanced users, we also have this kube CTL shell available to you right here. You can literally just click that button and there you are. So of course you've got the option I showed you earlier by downloading your kube config file and running it all locally, or you can access the embedded kube CTL shell so you can interact with your clusters directly without actually needing to leave the UI at all. And on top of that, of course, with the Kubernetes API proxy, developers can hook in tools like VS Code securely through Portainer. So advanced users get flexibility while IT keeps control.
Remembering again that Portainer sits between your users and the clusters it manages, so all communications can be directed at Portainer. Now you'll note the specific cluster I'm connected to is a Telos cluster. If you click on cluster details here, you note that if you are running Telos with Omni, we make it really simple for you to update your Kubernetes version. Literally just select the version you want and hit update Kubernetes version or the Telos version. Update Telos. If you need to expand your cluster with Telos and Omni, you can literally just click add nodes and any that have been booted up and are staged and ready to be added will show up here. You just select your node and hit add node. Tano and Telos make a really nice combination for you to have a Kubernetes environment that you can manage entirely from Portana, including scaling your nodes and upgrading versions as you need, with no CLI scripts required, of course. People with a background like me who spent years working in VMware environments, I often describe Portana as the vCenter, where Telos is the ESXi. Together, they just make sense. Now, for CISOs and auditors, Portana logs all logins and user actions and all activity, and you can stream these logs to your preferred scene, whether it be Sentinel, Splunk, or any syslog target, really. It gives you full traceability and makes sure your enterprise compliance is covered. Now, I'll just touch on this alerting feature here. At the time of recording, as noted earlier, this is an experimental feature, but this will soon make its way into our long-term release. You'll see the rules we've created for our default alerts here. Expect the system rules to grow, but we decided to start with the most key alert rules we believe you would need. For each of these rules, you can simply enable it, and you can define your thresholds here as you see fit. Once enabled and threshold set, you can come into settings, you can define what channels you'd like to use to inform your users of an alert. You can select Slack, email, Teams, or even just define a webhook. This is an extremely useful feature we've had very positive feedback for, which is why I expect it to be in the LTS pretty soon. Finally, just a quick mention of Edge Compute. You'll notice the Edge Compute options here on the left. These don't show by default. You simply need to come down to Settings and click on Edge Compute and enable that feature. This then enables the H feature. You can see all the settings here. I won't go through the, all of them in this demo, but essentially Portainer enables you to manage fleets of remote devices and group them. So you can deploy apps at scale and push configs securely. If you have multiple remote sites, you want to deploy a consistent stack across them. You would define your edge groups. In each edge group, you would allocate your sites and then you'd define a stack that you want to deploy to that edge group for a consistent deployment across all the environments that belong to that edge group. Again, I won't go deep here, but it's a core strength for a lot of our customers. That's all I'll cover for now. I tried to keep this demo focused entirely on some of the core enterprise features. Obviously, Portainer's list of capabilities and features extends far beyond what I was able to cover in this short demo session. But I hope what I've covered today has given you a good picture of what Portainer is and is capable of. It's a single lightweight platform that gives you everything you need for containers and Kubernetes. From setup to security, deployments, operations, soup to nuts. It's intuitive, it's scalable, and it replaces the CNCF tool sprawl with one enterprise-ready solution. So I want to thank you for watching, and I hope this gave you a clear picture of how Portainer can simplify your container operations. And if you'd like to dive deeper and understand how Portainer fits your use case more specifically, we're here to help. Please don't hesitate to reach out.